What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hello There, our Kenobi, all Obi-Wan Kenobi podcast. We are talking, of course, part five. So if you haven't seen it, just take a chill pill, go watch it two or three or four or five times, then come back, enjoy this chat with us. Uh, But if you have watched it, hopefully you've joined us at twitch.tv slash the Geekiverse. Again, Obi-Wan Kenobi part five. And boy, what an episode it was, just when you think things can't get any better. I'm Josiah Leroy with me today, the usual cast and crew. Mr. Ewan McGregor, he wishes. John Fick. John, how's it going, man? Your need to prove yourself is your undoing. <sighs> Wait, were you talking to me there? Absolutely. Also with us, Mr. Tim Tails. Tim, how did you like, uh, in a nutshell, Kenobi episode five? I think it was my favorite episode overall. Wow. I yep. think I can get there with you. We're going to flesh I don't think it has my here. favorite... I posted on Twitter shortly after watching it. It's my favorite episode overall, but it doesn't have my favorite scenes in it. Fair enough. Episode two, I mean, the end of episode two is like by far one of my favorite things the entire show has done. But this one overall, I just love the whole thing. Totally yeah. consistent. I understand that for, for sure. It is, it's a ride, 100%. Like it, it, it yeah. is like beginning. It had everything I wanted. Yeah. I feel like uh, if we think back, the, to me, really, there's, no, there's been no weak point in this series. I'm blown away that this laid into it you know it's not just hey we watched the first episode and we were on this high because we were it's a new series right and we're getting you and mcgregor hayden all that stuff it's not that i think quality is there from one through five so far and that's what's blown my mind is that it's been relatively consistently high you've had those high points but man is it strong and even the storytelling the execution all of it has been I mean, the, Disney has nailed this with what we've been seeing so far. I think back to last week in part four, and I wouldn't say it was a weak point, but it, it was the first episode where I wasn't like dying to rush back to go watch it. It's still good. But then we get to this week and we get to part five and I was like, I got to watch that again. I, I, I got to go see that episode again. Yeah. And um, it sets us up for what hopefully is going to be a really, really strong finish with part six next week. But uh, anyway, John, thoughts uh, in a nutshell? on part five. Oh, it's incredible. You know, I, I might be with, with both of you guys. That might be the best episode of the, th- of the series so far. Um, I'm with your line of thinking a little bit there too, is I, I would even say episodes three and four, both a little bit slower than one and two were, and things get ramped back up with episode five here. Um, again, even, even still episodes three and f- three and four were awesome. I loved them. It's just, it's just, you're progressing the story narratively. You don't have the highs of the, you know, of the, the Vader scenes where he's, you know, pillaging through a, a village and you know causing chaos and stuff like that guess what episode episode five certainly has that so um i think that it's it's it it, it progresses and progresses the narrative like episodes three and four did but it also has those highs that episode one and two did so yeah i think it, it, was, it was awesome man we got we got some fun answers that we were looking for that we we've been speculating on with some of the reva stuff um we got to see vader just absolutely bring down a ship like like it's nobody's business man so much so much fun Dude, there was some incredible stuff with Vader in this. Um, kicking off the episode right away, we we see Coruscant, and you know it's Coruscant, oh. right? And it's like, you, oh my gosh, I'm like, this is about to happen. This is about to happen. Uh, there are two moments in this episode where I, I think I really kind of got just choked up a little bit, and I, I didn't see it coming because uh, a lot of times I just power through these. But one would have been right away when we see uh obi-wan and anakin in the training room at the the temple there, just having a duel between best pals you know uh but finding that mix too right because it has to take place before attack of the clones in in terms of timing so i think that was just a beautiful thing to see hayden christensen back on screen and they didn't really do a, it looks like any de-aging for these guys they didn't really have to i, I would say you know, that like, they maybe had to for for hayden he was playing a 19 year old kid pal no, oh. I'm not saying you can't tell. Right, I, for sure. I, it's, oh, so I, I think it was a choice is what I'm saying. Okay. I think I have a different opinion about that than a lot of other people do because to me, what maybe I thought they were going for, it was a, the reason they didn't de-age is because they wanted to seem like it was present. And it was like, hey, this is a flashback, but it's happening again. I, I thought and of I that like angle that's too. that's why they were going. I thought like, of that hey, angle too, but it, like, it, just, it just, you have yeah, to, you have, okay, to, get it, you have but, to do more to... to, to 
for me to feel that way. Like you have to kind of maybe like show a yes. little bit of Obi Wan's like current surroundings and like show me that he's currently visualizing that. I understand like you know processing that way. And if that's the way you took it, awesome. It, it worked a little better for you. Not to I say mean, I wanted not, to de-age it, but I'm just saying I get maybe right. where they were going. I have like, hey. I have little to no complaints. All I'm saying is that yeah, yeah he looked a little bit old. He, he's he's old. He, he's he's a, he's a hell of a lot yeah. older. older than he's forty one. Yeah, for something something like that. He's in his forties, right? Yes. Right. So, so of I, course it's there, but man, ah, through the the second they pull back that camera, like the, the nice picture of Coruscant, it's awesome. The second they pull back that camera and you see the back of his head and the braid, it's just like instant butterflies. And the even the the way they throughout those sequences throughout the movie or uh, the episode, excuse me, in how they fight, they you've got shades of that in them calling back almost like riding a bike to what Heck they yeah. did in the prequels together. And um, even the the fighting style, I just looked at Hayden. I was like, "Oh my gosh, he he didn't forget any of it." The the way he holds that lightsaber, it's 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 a little unique for Anakin Skywalker. But um, I like the way they smile at each other in there because it's almost almost like a memory, like a good memory kind of thing. And um, it's just it's very sweet. I think especially this this was a moment we've talked about on all of the 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 prior episodes we've recorded so far for Hello There. We talked about wanting to get a flashback sequence, and we we got it. Right now, a little bonus. We were hoping for Ahsoka, maybe something in the Clone Wars actually happening. But man, this was special. What a way, by the way, to make this a thing and tie it to the modern day story. So well done. Through, throughout, like that was absolutely brilliant. This was not a flashback for the sake of flashback. This right. actually held a lot of weight, and it's. I love that it's calling into Obi Wan's uh, memory on how his Padawan would strategize. He's using his time with Anakin slash Vader against him. That's really creative writing in my opinion. I, like I feel like it even brings more support to what he says in A New Hope where the last time I met I was or um, I was but the learner or whatever he says in there. Because this is a perfect example again like it's you know Darth Vader still realizing like hey I'm still a Padawan. You know, and like that's really it, what he kind of says in the towards the end there is as long as you fight the way you fight like you won't be where I'm at and I feel like that kind of shows on how he gets away is it's you know you're so aggressive and you're so simple minded on so getting you to your objective yeah. you know that it makes it easy and I'd still am better than you kind of thing that's what I took it as so or at least can or at least can get away I think we're at the point yeah. in Vader's in Vader's won. life that was where the yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah, he won. Yeah, he won the battle, but he didn't physically win, right? I think we're. Oh yeah, we're, no. we're, we're at the point <laughs> of Vader's that. strength that he, his raw strength can maybe overcome a little yeah. bit of that. But Obi Wan can still use, you know, the things he knows about his personality to his advantage, and that's exactly what we saw. And if, just uh, to call back to it real quick, I mentioned there were two moments I, I kind of got choked up and just kind of like came out of nowhere for me. That was one, you know, seeing those guys uh, and doing what they do in the first minute of that that episode. I just, I went, oh my gosh. I said it right out loud. Couldn't even help myself. The other moment was when um, uh, Tala dies. I think she sells that moment so well. And it's so beautiful because she she's she's essentially fighting for what is going to be the rebellion. The rebellion. Right? It's, it's not the Rebel Alliance. but Straight it, it's out of scene. Rogue One. Yep. It is straight out of Rogue One. So it's same vibes. That's happening there. But what really just got me out of nowhere was when she looks at Obi-Wan and says, may the force be with you. It's, it's really, really heavy for a few reasons, because they were starting to form a little bit of a bond, those two, right? They, there's a little bit of care there, almost back like in the Clone Wars uh, with the Mandalorian Queen uh, with, with Obi-Wan. But in this, too, it's all the more special to me because it's almost like chipping away at that last that last bit of the wall that Obi-Wan has up with the force. Cause he's yeah. not totally back, right? Like he's, he's almost been trying to learn to walk again and how he handles his lightsaber, how he communes with the force, all of it. it. It's special. And there's been, it's almost like a bad relationship. You you have this fight, you're apart for a while and you, you eventually almost reluctantly get back to where you're going. And I felt like that was the moment where she was like, let let your wall down. May the force be with you. And it just hit so hard for me. I thought it was really well executed there too. Yeah, a good way to look at it. I didn't, I didn't even think about it that way. E even that droid, by the way, like yeah. a little bit K two ish, right? In the yeah. in size. Oh, for sure. And and how yeah? How, how it kind of like defended her? That was the really first thing. Like, hey, I'm gonna block, start blocking. Them. I was like, I thought for a second she's gonna get away, and then I realized she was gonna, you know, do what she had to do. But Make the yeah, sacrifice I, I agree. Seen the thermal detonator really yeah. almost up close as it exploded. That was pretty sweet. Cool shot yeah. for sure. It was awesome. Uh, we should probably jump into 
some of the Vader stuff here. Ugh. The raw power that I'm sure, you know, all of us were giddy over. But, like, a lot of naysayers, if you will, from people that didn't like how Vader handled Rogue One or was handled in Rogue One and other they, other they things. Exist. Were, they exist. They're crazy. Absolutely crazy. But the way that his power is just untamed, if you will, in this is unbelievable. Whether it's the ship, how he handles that fight with Reva never for an ounce of a second on, on the run, no. right? Like he's just in He's control. just toying with the her the entire time. It, he's it, been since the beginning and the entire thing. That's, like That's what I was just about to say. He knew she was doing in the first place, yeah. Yep. I was just about to say that. Like you, you just see Vader's game plan and you just see it all come to fruition in this one. One of the first scenes in this, you see she delivers the news that we know where Kenobi is and he, you know, he drop, drops to your knee and he gives her the, the, the role of Grand Inquisitor. Him knowing that the other Grand Inquisitor is fully alive, like obviously at that point he knows that he survived and we're just doing this as a charade just to just to get Riva to show her true colors, basically. So, like, he's just playing her as a puppet and getting what he wants at the same time, you know, not, you know, accounting for Obi-Wan, but, you know, his plan worked other than the fact that Obi-Wan was able to escape. So he's just, he's, the, the, the raw strength, the brutal strength is there too, but just the way that he manipulates is one of, one of the coolest parts. I got goosebumps when he caught that cargo ship in the air with, and he brought it down. I was like, and then he like rips out the side of the door. Like I was like, holy! But shit. why not do it again? And <laughs> like, just like you just yeah. did it once. You don't seem too tired. I think to maybe he was distracted, so he went right away. Because yeah. he said, sure. like it flew out pretty quick." You can hear so. him if you can hear him really like struggling when he's doing that, right? Like, there's if listen to it again. Uh, he sounds like he's grunting as he's making that happen. Now, what's funny is a lot of. The people that I know that had issues with Rogue One, it's that he shows up and he doesn't do that exact thing to the Tantive Four, right? The ship that carries Princess Leia and the plans to the Death Star away that we see in A New Hope. And to me, that was never a, like a thing that I was like, yeah, he, he's going to catch them 10 minutes down the road. This is what Vader does kind of thing. He plays with people, he plays with his prey. He's sick. So... I see what you're saying too, John. Like, yeah, you just did it once. Why just can, can you gather that and just do it again <laughs> I mean, you know, a few seconds later too upset about but it like, it's funny it is funny because there's some logic to it but the way he did that tim you're right the way he rips those doors away the doors was more of a yeah. wow well factor to me because it's I like he sets that. it down and i didn't know there was a second one and he just rips the doors off i'm like holy shit like yeah, this is happening like he's violent. gonna kill all these people so it was, it was, i thought he was gonna kill the people i really for a second thought like shit yeah. oh for yeah, sure but I, it's I, over I, yeah i thought okay plan failed like what how are they getting out of yeah. this one you know I thought he was going to be walking through. So we see Obi-Wan walking through, not terribly close. It's, it's actually pretty close to that time. And I thought Vader was going to be on, on the hunt right after just slashing down people. Um, but <laughs> uh, in the, the, the Reva fight, I love that he doesn't use his lightsaber at first. Yeah, what, the Reva what? The fight? <laughs> Crazy. I don't know if we can call that the, a fight. The, the toying with, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, the encounter. The, the encounter is a good yeah. word for it. The way he uses the, the force to really take over that lightsaber, he gets it, pulls it apart. That's how those Inquisitor lightsabers are built. You know, they've, they've got the, the two lightsabers there. And there's the savagery. He just tosses the one down at her. He's like, I, if we're going to do this, I want to have a little bit of fun here. Have this back. Like, you know. Right. How about two, like... So I'm thinking about this. I'm like, all right. So we, we had a little bit of a lightsaber bout in episode three with him and Kenobi. We had this one today. I'm like, that's as many as we got in all the movies Disney has made. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Combined. Yeah, it is. Which I was wrong earlier. I said my favorite was act or the second part. It's actually the third. I got the episodes mixed up. It's the one where Vader and the runs into Kenobi and all that stuff. So. Okay. Oh, then I must have got them mixed up too. When I was saying three and four, was that was that episode three? One the village one is episode three. Oh, okay. Him then running I'm... through the the village. Yeah. Then I it was then the I, second I one. That, that was when he went. When Obi Wan uh... figures out at the end that. Oh, he goes to the. the he goes end. to the the city. That one. Yep. 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 Uh, yep. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, I forgot about that one. Yes. Yes. So, yes. So that I also I love the way that a uh, Rava, you know, kind of duels with him like. Even though he's fully in control, I love seeing the the raw aggression and her Trying. her style with how she she's got just a touch of that old Jedi in her and how she flings that lightsaber around, even though she was young when that ended. Um, I just think all of it's so awesome, and obviously she's not dead, right? Like we literally just saw this happen to the other Grand Inquisitor, and and he lived. To so, be fair, he okay. has two stomachs, so that, that there is something there. But 
I don't feel like she wasn't stabbed like in. She's just like stabbed in the side. Yeah, oh yeah, like, she, uh, she's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's not I, like I, through the chest. She's totally, she's totally fine. I think I think that's leading. I think that right there, her finding that hologram is maybe leading up to what we're gonna get in the final episode. Um, because you gotta think about it. Like there, there's cannon in place. Like Luke, Luke can't see a lightsaber. Like he can't. Right. That doesn't make. It wouldn't make any sense. So I don't. We gotta. Yeah. They've, they've been, again. What's that? I thought we get Owen confronting her and them having like that's a one thing. Bout. Yeah, so I think Reva's going to be on her way there. Um, is it Owen that confronts her? It does Obi Wan get back there and confront her before that? I don't know. Um, there, there's so much that can't does happen. Bail? Does oh Bail Organa? Bail Organa right? Very yeah, good point. He said he's on his way. So does she get there and you know Bail confronts her and what is it just does he just talk her off a ledge? I don't know. I don't know what kind of like weight he would have to be able to convince her there. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it. I'm very curious to see. I was not expecting them to to pull the Luke card. And again, they can't. No. They can't do too much with it. They can't. There's just too much at stake, canon wise, that we know. Luke, Luke has a. That's part of Luke's character. Like he he doesn't have a life of adventure. He didn't have these traumas as a young boy. He has been a farmer for 17 years, however old, old he is. He has had a boring, boring life, and I I don't want them to change that. Like that's a part of Luke that just is like. He's he's seeing none of this. His his introduction to the galaxy and the fact that like there's more out there and the Rebel Alliance is real and stuff like that. His introduction to that was when he meets Obi Wan and R two and C three PO and stuff like that. Like that. I don't think you mess with that at all. So I think yeah. if there's a confrontation, it happens like off in the distance and and nobody ever gets close. Um, but it was an interesting choice yeah, I, to end this episode on the on that shot of Luke. I yeah. think uh, my prediction is is that Owen confronts Reva. Reva. And then Obi Wan comes to the rescue, and at the very end of everything, we see Owen giving Luke that ship that he threw at Obi Wan, kind of like a hey, like because he does nod. have the ship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. that's the same one. Yeah. So I think that's like, hey, you know, maybe I'll accept this a little bit, and I'll give. L you little, know, I'll bring you in here. You know? Yeah, a little, little give and take. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm so curious to see how, how that goes. I did not see that coming that Luke was going to be pulled into this, much like didn't see that Leia was going to be even a part of this, let alone the reason uh, Obi Wan's yeah, the main Obi character Lord. of the yeah. friggin' show. At least the yes. main, like, you know. Do we think we'll see Vader and uh, Obi Wan again? Yes. So, I'm not on Tatooine. So, wherever it happens. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I, is that to me is their battle? That was their battle. I agree with what you were saying, John, with like, you, you can't really get to Luke. So I got to imagine it's something like we've been saying where it's Owen, but is it Reva? Is it Bale or Gana? I, I feel like Vader can't know that Luke's on Tatooine. I don't think Vader's going to have any idea about Luke in general, let alone why Obi-Wan's going to Tatooine. But for what it's worth, some and it could have just been promotional material. A lot of the promotion leading up to this showed a, or at least prompted a duel on Tatooine. That would be it, the only way that makes sense, I guess, is if, if Vader tracks Obi-Wan. A Vader but duel or a Reva Obi-Wan duel? No, Obi-Wan and Vader. Yeah, but okay. that's coming. That's, what we got is not their final thing. No, I, I think there will be another one, but just it being on yes. Tatooine would be very, like, you'd have to really d explain how that works to me because, like, how would Vader not know that's where Obi Wan is hiding out for these next X amount of years, these these next seven years, like everything like Very that? Very true. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of questions that th you'd have to really, really, you really, you really have to nail it home as to why that would make sense. My guess is it doesn't happen on Tatooine. I think you're going to get two different things. I think you're going to get Reva head to Tatooine. I think you're going to get a confrontation from maybe Owen or maybe maybe Bale. Um, and I think something else is because because Obi Wan is still on a ship that's you know taking all these people you know to a safe place. So he's still currently on a path right now. Um, it's not like he can just like split off and head to Tatooine. Obviously, right. they can do whatever they want with time jumps. Like you know, they can have him land and then ha then have him head over there. But um, I think I think whatever happens with uh, with Vader and and Obi Wan's not going to be on Tatooine. That's just my hunch. I think maybe here's another way it could go. It could go to Reva going there. Obi Wan confronting her and her basically threatening like, "Hey, if you don't come with me to go confront Vader together, because I can't beat him on my own." You know, I'll go kill Luke or whatever. Like I know, Maybe. I think and there's then they definitely go together. a threat of collateral there. When, and she when, says, like, let's go together. Like you told me, yes. let's go fix this kind of thing. And they go together to go confront Vader, and that's the final duel we get. She just we obviously Reva doesn't know that Luke and Leia no, are she a just, thing. She just knows there's this boy that's at stake. Vader. Yeah. Yes. Right, but she, she just kidnapped Leia to get to 
you yeah. know, Kenobi really, or really to Vader. Yeah. So I, I think there's so many ways that it could go. What I will say is this, even if it does end up on Tatooine and they have this duel there, the series has not disappointed in how it has really in almost an airtight way explain things yeah. that I was like, okay, that makes sense. Cause there's sometimes with star Wars where things can be a little too convenient. And I have not felt that way with the series, even to the point where I was like, okay, what pulls Obi-Wan off of Tatooine? Like what makes him get back in the fight? Oh my gosh. It's that princess Leia was kidnapped. Never saw that coming, but it's, it's perfect. It's great. And, and, yeah. that's, so, like, and, faith. and that's a great example of how they're like, yes, they're, they're willing to, to mess with some of, you know, some of the preconceived notions we have. When, when we watch A New Hope, it very much feels like Leia does not know who this Obi-Wan is that she's talking to, mm -hmm. right? Like, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that she did, right? There's nothing, there's no verbiage that excludes that. It's kind of just a vibe we got from that interaction, right? So to do it this way, it's like, okay, no, she met him. They had this little adventure. She goes on to become, you know, what she becomes. And it makes sense for her path because she's heading towards the rebellion. She's heading towards being a leader. Like, totally makes sense. It contradicts a little bit about what we thought, but nothing black and white. doesn't contradict anything Correct. in black and white in right. stone, right? Maybe just like, you know, so it just kind of rewrites that. I just think there's a little too much that is in black and white with Luke and his, you know, the start of his journey that they have to be really careful about. And Joe, I'm right there with you. They've been so careful. They have done it so well. People, yes. people in the comments like, oh, they broke can and they killed a grand inquisitor. Guys, the guy, he's not dead. If you're if you're if you're saying that word, if you're saying that phrase, they broke canon, you're wrong. You're already wrong. They're not gonna do that. Like that's their yeah. that was Disney's biggest thing about buying Star Wars is like, all right, there goes all this stuff is now legends, we're creating our own canon. I'm just gonna break Sorry, guys, it. I just that's because I'm the only one not wearing glasses, sir. Oh, thanks, Tim. Appreciate that. Oh, now we now we can actually honestly now, all, we've only been going honestly, for Honestly, like, my opinions mean so much more now. I think we just redo the show, right? Let's just scrap yeah, start, it. Just yeah. start it over. Get rid of this cloud. Okay. I was gonna say something, then I realized it, and I was like, "Now I forgot what I was gonna say." So. What about uh, Luke, the the kind of the close up of Luke at the end? Uh, I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but the I'm looking at that kid, and this is the first time it hit me. He looks like he, he was Anakin's son. Like he is like a little bit of a young Hayden Christensen. They really got the look there for yeah, agreed for casting. Yeah, oh, sure. I remember what I was gonna say now. Um, so I was gonna go run uh, right off of John's point and say. I saw someone on Twitter, someone posted that Star Wars fan want to be spoon fed. They want to know all the answers right away in that second, that second episode when the Grand oh, Inquisitor patience. gets... You know, they're like, oh, they ruined it. Like, give them a chance to tell the story. Like, don't just assume that they're not going to close Seriously. the loophole. Like, week you know? one, all of the Reva hate was like, oh, this character shows so shallow. She has no motivation. She's just angry for the sake of being angry. It's two episodes into a six-part series, and this is a brand new character. Give it some time. Like, I'd like Honestly, to think that, we just got a great payoff for Reva. We just saw her, like, you know. Uh, one of the best fights in Star Wars, I think, just to really see cool. Vader over. It was awesome. Right. But it was so awesome. And we, something we haven't talked about yet, her conversation with Obi-Wan and the reveal yep. of her true intentions were really cool. Like, that, that character makes a lot of sense. It's something that, in a roundabout way, we all thought was kind of the case. We didn't really know what her intentions were. We didn't. I don't think anybody really nailed down the fact that she was, like, actually out to try to get vader i think it was more no. so just like i didn't know no nope. did you say check that the, check the recording yeah, I, no, well, I, I said you. so i had mentioned how someone on twitter i had seen that they had posted the pictures of all the uh people with their eye with someone in their eye oh right and you she did was say the that. only one him and obi or obi-wan and her were the only one with vader in the eye and i was like she's yeah. probably haunting vader yeah, and this is her way to do it good point but to your point too john like this is the first time in star wars that we'd see someone infiltrate Mm -hmm. To be bad, like is an inquisitor in, in to get level, to the objective. Right. Yeah, actually, like that's intense. Actually, acting out all of the evil stuff and really just disregarding everything is, else. So my thought is, I think she is actually evil. She's just driven for revenge on oh, someone for sure inside of there. Well, you know she, what I mean? Look at the stuff she does. There's like, not yeah, much right. redeemable. She's no about. Jedi. At this so, point, you know? There's no. She's on. She's fully dark side. Yeah. I just think she's. I feel like that's part of the dark side is like you could still hate someone who's also dark sided, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, that, that's the thing, right? With the Sith and the rule of two and the Inquisitors, all this stuff is, is tied up all into that. I got to say, you know, even though we kind of predicted that she was a youngling and she was there in the beginning with Order 66, the payoff was still really good there because I, I was like, I, it's not one of those eye roll moments where I'm like, oh, we all predicted this. Oh, it still was fine. The Vader thing to me still was a twist. I did not expect it to actually go there. I just didn't. I thought that it would all be about Kenobi and trying to prove herself. And I'm like, why are you trying to prove yourself? Why? We even talked about it. Why would you want to be that close to Vader? I think I said. 
well, now it makes a little bit of sense. And yeah. that's nuts. Even they the way she, well, the way uh, she goes yeah. to like go up a, a behind Vader to like stab him is so nerve wracking, right? Because you're like, oh my gosh, she's going to turn around and mess her up. Her hand has this slight little shake in it. And yeah. I thought it was beautiful because she's such a fierce character that if she can be scared, who can't be scared? Like, oh my gosh, her payoff. I got to say, Reva has become a favorite character in a short period of time. And this episode really took her to new heights. I, I think they could have killed her off right then and there. And that still would have been a great arc for her. I think that would yeah, have been a, a very well done character. I hope, you know, who's, who's, who knows? Maybe they still ruined her character somehow in the last episode. But uh, I, I've got faith. It's been really good so far. I was going to say, along Joe's point, just kind of the comment of uh, you had mentioned who wants to be that close to Vader. Obviously, she didn't watch the original trilogy and see all the people get killed that yeah, were close to Vader. All so. those 4K force no, jokes. The 4K force jokes. <laughs> so. um, I love also, so we talked about kind of the symmetry between the, the training with Anakin and Obi-Wan to how Obi-Wan uses that against Vader step by step. That's beautifully executed. What is also awesome to me is the flashback sequence how that is rolled in between Reva basically being down on her knees, Vader's about to slice her, and then seeing Anakin as he's about to do that in the Jedi Temple back in Revenge of the Sith era. Yeah. That is an absolutely yeah. phenomenal. It's really good. It's cut really well. And honestly, anything to just give me more flashbacks of Anakin and Order 66 and the Clone Wars, any of it. Just give me just anything that's going to give me more of that. I'm in. Sign me up. When the, the show started with that that warning that they did add back into part one where yeah. they said there are certain things that you know you may essentially find unsavory or unsettling. I knew right away, I was like, okay, so that means younglings. That means we're either getting a flashback or that confirms what we, we kind of thought all along about Reva. So um I man, it was just so well done. I, I love it. I can't I can't imagine what we're gonna see in terms of any any more flashbacks. In, uh, in part six here. Yeah, I wonder but, if we'll see any more of that. I don't know if there's any room for that. They've got some stuff to wrap up here. I don't know how long the episode's going to be. I know JT said it could be something like an hour and a half just based on like the show, the run times that have... I saw or, an official official thing saying it should, it's like an hour and 33 minutes or something. Oh, like yeah? That. Officially? Mm -hmm. That's killer. Mm -hmm. That's killer. See, that's, I, a, that's, I, a, that's, a, that's a movie. That's a literal yeah, movie right there. Wait, it's a movie. I mean... <laughs> that, that's something that's been said or issued? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I saw it okay. somewhere. Yeah, that, I don't that know would... where. I was on Twitter. I saw it like... Pull that up because I fully expect this to be like 45 minutes. Oh, if it's on so. Twitter, it's, I mean, it's real. You can't really... Yeah, dude. Nothing, nothing I don't really to check there. Just trust me on this one. I saw a credible source. <laughs> well, hey, um, you did see the thing with Reva in, in her eye towards that, Vader. It, so. hey, it, yeah, that, I am that, one for one. That panned out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that would be awesome. If we got a whole hour and a half, like, man, how long is A New Hope? Isn't it probably close to an hour and a half? Like... Uh, maybe two hours it's, it's over two yeah, yeah. but I, still i always think like yo back then movies weren't that long but i guess uh star wars <laughs> was different yeah star wars always always pushing the script there so we uh we've got a lot of our checklist items well uh, i know some of our pie in the uh the sky stuff we haven't seen like a cal castus we're not gonna see yeah, that at no, this point i don't that, think that, that um, was all we always talked about that as like man that, that would be a nice to have but not a need to have and not even an expectation to be honest for sure i think uh, uh even though not likely I, I could see something quickly with Ahsoka, maybe even if it's a, a post credits thing of sorts to tease her series that is in production right now. Um, but I wouldn't hold my breath either. And then I would say, you know, it was largely absent in terms of this episode and in, in being in our minds, but uh, Qui Gon Jinn, right? So that yeah. that's got to happen here. I've, in, I've in got a, six. I've got a new prediction for for what happens with Qui Gon. I don't I don't think that. So I I've, I've always been on the on the uh, side that Qui Gon would be like the the motivation to to get Obi Wan back where he needs to be with the Force. So like before his last you know showdown with Vader, he would tap in, see Qui Gon, something like that. I think it will be. I think the next time that uh, that uh, Obi Wan steps foot on Tatooine will be him going into this hibernation again and going back into the cave and watching Luke from afar. I think everything gets settled before Obi-Wan steps foot back on Tatooine and he's going back into his cave and his life and stuff like that. And now that he's done this and he's come back, he's back in touch with the force. I think that's when he finally can get in touch with Qui-Gon and that'll be like maybe the last couple of minutes of the show. And he sits down and he, he reaches out once again and his old master is there and they have like a, maybe a little conversation. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's, that's not what I think is going to happen. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I could see that happening. I, I like the idea still of 
you know, I think this was a prediction I had a few weeks back of Qui-Gon, maybe even if it is pre-fight with Vader, saying something to the the effect of, listen, Anakin's gone. This is not the, the guy you, you think he is anymore. There's that. And then there's even uh, in this episode, when Obi-Wan's at the door, I think he was at the door with Reva talking, and she says, do you want Anakin dead kind of thing? And I was like, oh, Obi-Wan just had this horror on his face. Like, I, I don't know if I want that, right? right? Like, he wasn't ready to to say it, even though he said just a few minutes later, after he's captured, it's like, we can end this together. So at that point, it's almost like he's kind of made up his mind. It's yeah. like, I that, love the conflict there. That's why I'm not so sure I'm sold on that uh, that aspect of uh, Qui-Gon coming back to convince him, because it really does seem like he fully sees this this entity as Vader at this point. He just, he's he's never referred to him as Anakin throughout the show. Like the fear, the, the respect for the power. I don't, I don't get that vibe that he thinks that Anakin's there anymore. I, I, I have the having I Anakin yeah. a few times for what it's worth. And speaking like, about it, it, Anakin, but not speaking about that entity, like Anakin is coming this way, right? Like you're just talking about his old friend Anakin and how I don't, I don't think he's called Darth Vader Anakin. Maybe I'm wrong. That's, that's kind of, a, kind of besides the well, point. Well, Reva kind of says through the door, like, why didn't you kill? You know, you don't want to actually kill him, Anakin, do you? And right. Like, again, that's Reva answer. speaking of him. We, yeah. We, like, I, I just think, like, yeah. again, that point's kind of moot. doesn't really matter if, he, if he's called a, called a mannequin or not. Um, what I more so mean is that, like, he has never given any indication throughout this show that he thinks Anakin is still in there, from what, I, from what I've gathered. Like, he is fully afraid of this Vader, and, like, he, he spent the last 10 years of his life. Well, actually, that, that's not true. He didn't know that Vader was still alive. So that's, that's a moot point as well. But... Yeah. We'll see. I will say one thing that I'm happy they talked about is that, uh, so if you flash back to part two and Reva is hunting Obi-Wan and she's talking about Anakin Skywalker, I really, that you know, I wasn't upset, but I was like, that's not a known thing throughout the galaxy that Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. And Anakin right. Skywalker was a famous Jedi. He was like the poster child for the Jedi Order. He was the chosen one. All of this stuff, even externally, it was not just an internal Jedi thing. He was a popular general. They, he, he was said to have been killed at that point when Vader took over, which, you know, right from a certain point of view. So I love that they cleared that up in this. When even Obi-Wan goes, how did you know? Because that's not something that he would kind of make known. Right. I really thought, thought that that yeah. was tight. Yeah, that was one of those things that people complained about. It's like, how does she know? Why would she say that? And I think that's quickly what spawned a lot of those, you know, those conversations. That, okay, she was probably a Padawan, and that's kind of how those theories came to, came to fruition. But yeah, I'm glad they addressed it face value. So uh, just a little update here. So it was posted by Star Wars Only. It's from a Cineplex, and it says it's an hour and 33 minutes. So okay. I guess on there it says it's possible that there might be a 30-minute Q&A after. But they're uh, not. They don't know if that's part of the runtime or not. So maybe after, maybe including. Interesting. But but JT also said that the total runtime for the, all the, the entire series is five hours, right? And we've at least like an hour and thirty minutes left. So well, it's I, possible. Think, I think that was always kind of like a. I don't know if it was ever like a set in stone. I think they were right. said, "Hey, this will be about you know this long." I, I'd be happy to be wrong. Like yeah, I would love an hour and a half. half. Holy, holy crap! But another you news know? on this same post, there's a, also a meme. Oh, okay, and it, love it. You know, it, uh, it's, it's one of the famous ones where uh, Owen's holding the pole. And uh, it says, uh, Vader says, when I left you, I was but the learner, but now I am the master. And then Owen says, like you were the master of the Jedi Cancel. Oh, and no. Then, uh, Vader's walking away. <laughs> he sure wasn't. Um, what makes me think that's just like not accurate is, is, is that no run times were released for any other episode. Right. So I bet you that yeah. that converse, like that tweet is based off of what we're thinking, like with the, right. so, you know, the, the estimated five hour runtime. So they're probably taking the, that, you know, whatever's left the hour and a half and saying, Oh, that's what we have left. And maybe they do know for a fact that there's a, there's a 30 minute Q and a, and they're just kind of, you know, putting those. Two How long was the first episode? Together. 53 minutes. They've all maybe. been between like 39 and 50 minutes right around there. I, yeah, I think yeah. that's about what we're going to get again. My thought is like, I feel like it'd be out of the ordinary for them to do longer, but it would be awesome to get an hour and 30. It would. It would certainly cool. would be yeah. on yeah. both accounts there. Yeah. 56, 42, 48, 39 and 43. Okay. So oh, yeah. Those yeah. Are the, yeah. in order. Uh, uh, Marissa I'll, in the chat. Yeah. Hour and a half. That w absolutely will be a long morning because there's no way I'm not getting up early again. For, for sure. This. I yeah. just have to have I, to do it. I didn't, I didn't get yeah. up early for this week for it. And I, and I regret it because I had to stay off social media for like, I, I don't, I had to watch it at lunch and kind of chip away at it throughout the day. So it wasn't, I mean, again, I just wanted to no talk about it with you, John. It. We couldn't, I know I had to kind of just stay away from the chat, but um, yeah, I'll be up early this week for next week for sure. 
anything uh, we missed in discussing this uh, part five of Kenobi? Uh, I'm sure. Before we wrap things up. Yeah, the only other thing is there we got more. I don't know any of them off the top of my head, and I, I don't know them as characters, anyways. But we got more Jedi reveals on the path, like the wall of the path. Um, I was listening to another breakdown of this, and there's, there's, I think there's at least two Jedi's from Legends that they could, conf- you know, they that were on that wall that they brought back. Um, neither of which I recognize, but cool to see them dropping stuff like that. Yeah, those are really deep Easter eggs. I, I think uh, for last week. They, uh, I was looking into it, and there were three or four names that were from different legends. Some were video games, some were novels. I had not heard of them whatsoever. They, they are deep dives. Yeah, love it, respect it. Um, I was kind of expecting to recognize someone's lightsaber today. You know that pile yes. of lightsabers. Right. Yeah. Yes, especially when he picked one up. I'm like, wait, what's the significance there? Like, yeah. I For think s- maybe yeah. my thought on that when I saw it is maybe those are the people that had passed through and are no longer alive. And that's where they put their lightsaber and their Jedi robes. Yeah. So I agree. Maybe like a graveyard almost. Yeah. Yeah. But I was expecting to see like one that stood out, like Joe said, like, you know, yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, Oh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't know, but you guys might. So something silly like, like Qui-Gon's right. Like, and maybe that was going to be the moment. I was like, Oh my gosh. Maybe somehow Mace Windu's ended up Qui-Gon is right there (laughs) behind you. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not saying purple Mace Windu was made it go through crazy. the path. I'm just saying that like somehow was just a purple lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> he just says this party's over. What? What happened? <laughs> oh man, yeah, lots of lots of good stuff. Hopefully on the way for part six. Anything that we haven't predicted? Anything that we're we're hoping to get for a, a last second thing that we haven't gotten already? Because right now I feel very fulfilled with what Me we've too. gotten with this entire. I hope series. we get another Vader and uh, Obi Wan where he's they're a little more. A little more I, of a, a duel. I want to it, see like them both spinning their lightsabers and no one's doing anything. I, I want some chatter. Me too. I, I want, I want some, some, even mm-hmm. if it's just one way, even if it's just Obi-Wan yep. just barking at, at Vader or whatever. But yeah, I, I want a little bit of dialogue between the two of them. And I'm sure that it will come via an encounter with lightsabers. I need some of that. It's obviously not going to be closure, right? But like, I, I need that that next level because these guys have not seen each other in, in 10 years. And the way they... they almost force connected at the end of the part two when Obi-Wan realized Anakin was still alive. I, I think all of that, I, ne- I need to hear some of the resentment and maybe even callbacks to the training. All of, I just, I, I hope, you know, if we're getting something like an hour and a half, which again, I'm not banking on that tells me there's a good long time set aside for what's going to be an encounter between Vader and Kenobi. And I really hope it happens. Uh, so a question for you guys. Uh, do you think Reva lives at the end? No, yeah, I don't think so. I think so. Really? I didn't think so until this episode. I think she dies. Yeah, I think she dies too. But I think knows? there's a confrontation between the three of them. Vader kills her. I think she and that may cause play, maybe. Yeah, that may cause Obi Wan to say like, "Hey, like I'm going back to Tatooine. Like I'm not meant for this. Like kind of thing. Like it was before." We'll see. Star Wars kills off so many main characters. I just, it's hard to believe in this day and age that people stay dead. You know, I, I guess I, with the Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, I, I guess with Inquisitors, I, I, I always think they're going to die because, like, we've been introduced to so many, but we've never seen them kind of repeated other than the Grand, Grand Inquisitor. Like, we see, right. we see these Inquisitors introduced for, like, a specific medium of work. And to me, it's just like, okay, well, they're just going to be recycled or, or re, uh, disposed of so they can bring in new ones, I guess. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, Things that I want, this is, like, very oddly specific and won't happen, but, like, somehow I want Vader's voice modular to get damaged in in those conversations. I want want to hear Hayden Christensen's voice. I want to hear him as Vader. Like, maybe Obi-Wan gets somehow gets a good slash in and, like, maybe a piece of the mask goes missing. We see the face and the mouth. How sick would that be? I, I don't you know, know how that works times, canonically with like his breathing and stuff like that, but like that's my want. I mean, how many times, for what it's worth, have you not in the movies, but we've seen Vader's mask messed up, whether it's some of the lore, the comics, the novels, yeah, uh, even uh, video games from Legends. I mean, Kylo Ren's right all the time, so like it, that could happen. I would love to see part of Hayden's face there, right? Even if it's just like the eye from here and like his breathing is still fine, but like the voice thing's messed up. Like I need. That that's like the number one want for me, but again, there's there's not much I can complain about. Uh, you know, no, no matter how they end this yeah. season, it's been it's been awesome. It's been every like I think before this this uh this show came out, I told like I was saying it was one of my most anticipated pieces of uh of anything of all time, and it, it's living up to that. It's so awesome. I'm gonna go as far to say, uh, I I did say this already. This was the most excited I was for something Star Wars since the hype around force awakens. Cause that right. was the return of star Wars after 10 years. Right here. Um, 
five episodes in. We got to wait till we get part six so I can really give my full judgment then. But um, minus Force Awakens, I think it's the best thing Disney has done Star Wars related since they've owned the property since 2012. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I and agree that. with you. I'd agree. But, yeah, I think that a lot of that, in, in, in not in a cheap way, not in like you know a way that discredits it. A lot of that is nostalgia. We we love these actors and we love these characters, so that's such a huge thing is to see them back. It's like it already starts on such a high because we want to see these characters back. Um, but in terms of maybe like more original characters and stuff like that, I think M- Mando has been killer. So I think those are my my two favorites. So like this is my favorite thing that Disney has revisited, and Mando is my favorite new thing that they've brought in. So I'm, I'm glad we've gotten both of them. So shout out to Disney Plus Star Wars shows. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. Not um, you, Boba. Odd that, I was just going to say, odd that you didn't mention Book of Boba Fett there, but I digress. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, it's it's going to be a long week, a little less than a week now, since uh, or till we're about to get part six for that. So uh, let us know in the comments on, on social media. What are you looking for? What have you liked so far? Is there anything that's been lacking in your opinion? Would love to hear from you. Get in the conversation, whether that's live at twitch.tv slash the Geekiverse over at youtube.com slash the Geekiverse or listening on podcast services wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, wrapping things up for this episode, if you're on Twitch with us, we are going to hang out. We're going to get an episode of Busy Sticks in after this uh, to talk about some of the, the big announcements that happened in the world of gaming, including Summer Game Fest and Final Fantasy VII's Part II uh, this week. But Tim, if people are craving more Star Wars content, We've got some at the Geekiverse. What can they check out? They can check out our Star Wars review. We actually just wrapped it up, what, a week or two ago? We watched it all in person. And uh, first time seeing the last, last, uh, last part of the whole trilogy. So I uh, really enjoyed it. So check that out. And um, I know also, too, we're, we're live on Twitch. Got some different games going on. And so it's been, uh, been a lot of fun. Yeah, God blast. of War's been uh, yeah. great. You've been playing that. I've been uh, jumping into that as well. You can check that out. Uh, John, one way that people can help us, uh, I know uh, a, a lot of people that have been tuning into us, we're super thankful, are new to Twitch. Uh, so twitch.tv slash the Geekiverse again. Uh, you can follow, but you can also subscribe and you can do it for free. You can, can you kind of explain to them what that looks like and how yeah. it helps us. Absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of new people to Twitch. We're new to Twitch too. This is a relatively new endeavor for us. Um, but yeah, so like Josiah said, following is free. Subscribing is is usually something that's a paid way to support us. But if you have an Amazon Prime account, which I think most people nowadays have Amazon Prime because it's just too convenient not to. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you have a Twitch Prime account as well. What that means is you can give us a Twitch Prime subscription once a month, which is just a free $5 for us basically. Um, if you don't know what, anything about that, literally just Google Twitch Prime. Google Twitch Prime. There's a page where you can link your Amazon account and your Twitch account, and you come back to our stream and you can press subscribe, and there will be a button that says subscribe free. You either see two buttons, subscribe $4.99 or subscribe free, and you'll see that subscribe free button if you've linked your Amazon and your Twitch account. Totally free for you and awesome for us. Uh, Twitch Prime is a killer, killer way for people like us to make a couple of bucks and you know keep keep the lights on for for these podcasts and things like that. Um, we got to figure out a way to get a better internet connection for Joe. He hasn't dropped today, which is great. Um, but th- those Twitch Prime subs will uh, continually help our setup, so we would appreciate that. Yes, we thought it was a laptop, but it was in fact not the laptop. So it is it is Joe's internet. So it happens when you live in the middle of nowhere, Joe. That's what happens. Uh, there's there's pros and cons for sure. Uh, so yeah, definitely uh, check that out. We would appreciate you uh, looking that up to subscribe to us for free at twitch.tv slash the Geekiverse one more time. Uh, hanging around for Busy Sticks. We hope you are. We're going to get into some game talk in just a bit. But for John and for Tim, I'm Josiah. Hope you have an awesome, awesome night. May the force be with you.